Hi, welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to use an Arduino to control a motor. Now, one of the limitations of the Arduino is that the digital output pins can only supply 40 milliamps of current. And that's a lot less than what a typical motor will draw in order to operate. In fact, many motors require a higher voltage in addition to a lot higher current. But we're going to solve that problem by using a type of transistor called a MOSFET. And like a transistor, it has three leads. And the gate controls the current flow from the source to the drain. So a very small amount of current on the gate will give us control of a larger or a higher voltage and current to operate the motor. Now another problem we have to overcome is that a motor can create a back voltage and that can damage your circuit or in this case the transistor. So we're going to put a diode in parallel with the motor to cancel that back voltage and prevent it from damaging our transistor. So the motor is an inductive device. When we pass a current through coils of wire that are, that are attached to the shaft of this motor, they create a magnetic field that are either attracted to or repel uh, two permanent magnets of opposite polarities that are also inside the housing of this motor. You can see here with this compass that we have two opposite polarity magnets well the orientation is such that uh, they're opposite polarity here so when we pass current through those coils it creates a magnetic field but the opposite occurs also if you pass a wire through a magnetic field, a current is generated in that wire and also a voltage that has opposite polarity to the direction of the current flowing in that wire. So we can demonstrate that by turning this motor and showing that it can be also used as a small generator by attaching it to this LED. And we'll just spin the shaft here. And you can see it lights up the LED in only one way, in one direction. If I spin it clockwise, nothing. Counterclockwise, it lights up the LED. So that's why we have this diode in parallel. Because even when you turn off the motor, it'll have some inertia. And the shaft will spin. And those coils will cut through the magnetic field of the permanent magnets that are in here creating a current and a voltage opposite polarity to the direction of that current that can damage this transistor. So we have the diode in parallel with the motor so that it uh, discharges that voltage so it doesn't damage the transistor. So here's the circuit we have this switch that when closed will supply 5 volts to pin 2 and we're going to declare pin 2 as an input and also call it variable switch pin and pin 9 will declare as an output and we will call this motor pin and very little current will flow into the gate uh, a FET or FET is a voltage control device so very little, very high input resistance and very little current flows into the gate. So when this voltage goes high, it'll turn on this transistor and allow current to flow from the source to the drain through the motor, turning on the motor. Now here's the diode that we use to prevent the back voltage from damaging the transistor. 
when we turn the current off, the motor will still have inertia and those wires will cut through the magnetic field and create a voltage that will be opposite the direction of the current. So that voltage will pass through this diode in only this one direction. When there's a plus voltage and a minus voltage, it'll pa the current will pass through this diode. And notice also we're using a 9 volt battery but we still have to make sure we have common ground so we take the the minus side of the battery and connect it to the ground of the Arduino. So let's take a look at the sketch. So this sketch is pretty straightforward and it's similar to the one where we just used the Arduino to turn an LED on and off except in this case we're using pin 9 to turn the transistor on and off uh, which will control the current through the motor. So initially we have two constant variables switch pin equal to pin 2 and motor pin equal to pin 9 and we're initializing switch state, integer switch state variable equal to zero. Then we're calling the void setup function and we're initializing using pin mode. We're initializing the variable motor pin as an output. So pin 9 is an output and we're initializing the variable using pin mode switch pin which is pin 2 as an input. And here we have a void loop function and we're going to do a digital read of switch pin. So we're going to see what the voltage is at switch pin and put that value into the variable switch state. Here we're going to do an if function. If switch state is high, we will turn the motor on using digital write. So if switch state is high, digital write, motor pin, which is pin 9, high. So a high on pin 9 will turn on the motor. If switch state is low, the motor is off. We will digital write, motor pin, low. And that's the loop. It keeps on doing that checking to see whether we have the switch pressed or not and whether the voltage on pin 2 is high or low. We can also show here by putting a current meter in series with the motor exactly how much current the motor uses and you can see it's a lot more than the Arduino would be able to supply. So the Arduino only has to provide the control signal to uh, turn this power MOSFET on and off and it's the brains of the operation and the MOSFET uh, is the muscle. So you can see there we've got 95-96 milliamps. Now that current is under no load so if we want this motor to do work it will draw even more current from the 9 volt battery. Let's see if I can demonstrate that by putting some pressure on the shaft here on this gear. See? You can see that increases dramatically. So I can get it over 400 milliamps, probably half an amp. It'll draw as much as it needs to. Of course the motor can't draw infinite current. Uh, it has its limitations too. It'll either stop or uh, stop and also burn out. But uh, that's how you use the Arduino to control a motor. It just provides the control signals and you have other circuitry that will do all the work. So hope you found this experiment interesting. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and or comment. And see you next video.